What's up? It's your boy Carcino. Let's do it. This is the truth behind the Method Man beef with, I guess, social media. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But, woo-wee. I will never forget this one. This was funny. I was cracking up. Method Man was in a basic bad mood. You know, he had a lot of stuff going on at the time. And nobody knew because Meth don't really do that many interviews. And the reason why is because hip-hop was starting to transform into a tabloid frenzy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's tabloid happy. So when you got the situation where everybody's jumping on every tabloid to show up to try to find something stupid to say, you know, Meth really went into that. Plus, he was upset with what was going on with his album. He had that, uh, what was it, uh, 432 or something like that, that album he had, 421. And that album was dope. It was better than that to Cal Prequel, which was the worst thing I heard in I don't know how long. But, anyway, Meth is in a bad, bad mood. You know, he had some on his shoulder the whole time. So we sitting there chilling. We ain't thinking nothing of it. We like, well, you know, that's just meth. He'll get over it. <laughs> the Wu-Tang got a concert. They doing a tour. They got together. and like, look, we got everybody together. And we finna do a tour. So, I don't know how they did it, but they got everybody back together. They really got them all back. And everybody was there, you know, except for Dirty Rest in Peace. But every member was there. So, we all going to the concert or whatever. And then my homegirl shows up, you know, and we all got the homegirl that, you know, we cool with. You know, we, you know, we cool. You ain't got to sleep with all your homegirls and all that stuff. In order for them to be your homegirl, you know, they just some cool people to hang around. Ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hate that way back in the day. But wasn't my best performance. It was really one time and it was terrible. In my defense, and this is what I I gotta clear my name. In my defense, I'm in this mop this little pantry closet, there's mop buckets everywhere. And in this narrow space is actually mops and prunes and everything. I have no, I can't do anything in this area. I'm trying to do the best I can because I know this is the only shine I have at this ridiculous party. And it's in this area, this confined little bitty space. I got to try to make it work. So it wasn't my best performance. I knew that. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm about to have a cramp. My leg going to give out. I can't do anything here. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get back on subject. <laughs> I just wanted to clear my name in this. But she shows up. Now this is many years later since that incident with me. She's just somebody I've been knowing and happened since and I never judged her because she's a well. Oh. But I never judged her. So She's able to be a hoe around me. Because she's like, well, he don't care I'm a hoe. You know, he don't go around telling the neighborhood I'm a hoe. So I could be myself around him. He's cool. So that's that was the angle. You know, she was just come around and she would bring her friends around. And then, you know, like, you like her? You like her? I could hook you up. I could hook you up. I'm like, eh, she's about an eight, six. I call it Tuesday. So, we had a good friendship, a good connection. But anyway, it's the Wu-Tang concert, and she wanted to come down there all of a sudden. I'm just like, I never really seen her, like, bumping the Wu-Tang or anything like that. And I'm down here with, with a lot of other people. So we get down there, and uh, she run up like, 
hey, what's up? Did I miss anything? I'm like, nah. You know, the, the thing over, you know, everybody's cool. And Wu-Tang came out and chilled with the public after it was over. No security. Because they had the, the bus right there. They had to go to Detroit. So, they only had a couple hours. They had to get on the bus. And they weren't going back to the hotel. Everything was on the bus. They was going from there to Detroit. So, they got everything on the bus. So, everybody's just out chilling. You know, they just did the show and what's not. So, everybody just on the street doing them. Donna Capadonna sitting over there with me. And he talking to the whole group from like the Nation of Islam. They going through the Quran. Yeah, man, so this is what's happening, you know what I'm saying? And like they say in the Quran, brother. And he's like, man, I know, I'm trying to get right. And my other homie trying to pass some Capadonna some weed. He was, bro, we don't know, bro. You gonna smoke that, please, brother. Go over there, man. I'm trying to get right. <laughs> so, so he was like, oh, okay, man. I, you know, all right, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> so he walks across the street, and then here she comes, like, 20 minutes later, we having a conversation, we cracking up, talking about some old hip-hop stuff, and what was going on. I'm like, dude, it looked like you was shot in the neck doing the ice cream video. <laughs> I'm like, what was that style? You got, the, you got the headband around your neck. People thought that was keeping your head on you was so stiff. <laughs> so me and Donna, I'm just cracking on Donna. And all of a sudden... Here come, no, I'm going to say her name, I almost said it too. She come running up like, <laughs> I just love what met the man. I was like, what? Because during all of this, before, Method Man was the only one that didn't come out yet. Method Man was still inside because he was doing an interview with some of the urban Hip hop community newspapers like Rolling Out and all those other ones, Red Eye. And the funniest thing is, I was like, wait a minute, let me go up in here and see what's going on. Because I'm like, you just slept with Pendleton, man. How you do that? So I come in there to see what was going on with Mel. And I actually used to have a picture of it on my camera phone. But Meth was doing an interview with this one guy. I guess he's like the last guy that's left that's going to interview. And then he was like, so what is it about? I know you heard about all these homosexual rumors about you. And Meth was like, what? And Meth was like, man, you going to disrespect me like that? Uh, you going to disrespect me like that in front of my face too? I had a guts to do. Meth kicked his chair. And homie slid <laughs> in the chair and then he jumps up and points to the guy. You saw that, that's assault. You saw that, that's assault. That's assault. Now then, then Mep was like, you the same one that be following me around. You be he's like, you the one probably out here checking and looking at people's penis through their pants. You know, he ain't say the word penis, but Mep was <laughs> Mep was going off. Don't ever disrespect my man. And so people start coming back. They're like, what's going on, man? Like, man, get him out of here. <laughs> he was like, dude, I'm not, if I wanted to assault you, you would be assaulted. But Meth is mad. And he was like, that's why you fell off. You fell off. You whack. You whack. I ain't want to do the interview anyway. They made me do it because don't nobody want to do it. Nobody want to interview Meth. You whack. Dude, do you know these Wu-Tang fans? He was like, Mouth was like, oh, you still gotta make it out the swamp. Wu-Tang, kill me. That dude was stupid. He had about four, five people start chasing him, then he turned into like 30. Chasing my homeboy down the street on the north side. Don't mess with the Wu Tang, bro. <laughs> Your fans is going to. I was like, I feel sorry for this dumb self. But then it brought me back to the moment at hand. Old girl says she slept with Method Man. Method Man just got out of the interview. So what is she talking about? 
So I came back. I'm like, you said you saw a method man. She was like, I did. On the bus. That's why I wanted to come down here. I want to see the method man. I'm like, do you realize that's method man? You see the guy with the method man shirt on? Yeah. The six foot tall guy? Yeah. That's Method Man. <laughs> she was, that sure is Method Man. I'm like, well, who the hell did you sleep with? He said he was Method Man. I'm like, they look just alike. I said, oh my God. She's like, he raped me. I'm like, no, you the one thought he was Method Man. He said he was Method Man. But you gave it up to him, so that ain't rape. I'm like, I wouldn't go in there scar screaming no rape right now. These fans will tear you from limb to limb. You made a mistake and slept with somebody you thought was Method Man. That's on you. Don't go throwing that on the group. <laughs> but he said it. I said, hey, Method Man. And he was like, what's up? And I was trying to think who was there. And it was like, it could it was only two suspects it could be. It was either the RZA, who was the first one on the bus, Ghostface, couldn't have been Ray, Ray's out there with us, Donna's out there with us, the genius is out there with us, the RZA, Ghost, and you God. Those were the only three that it could have been. And she said, he wasn't that tall. She didn't know he was that tall because she she's like, but he was sitting down. And I was like, what shirt did he wear? And she said it was blue. And I said, oh my goodness. You slept with you, God. <laughs> And you thought, and you thought, that was Method Man. This is going down in history. <laughs> ah. Oh, man. Classic, classic, classic. But that reporter guy had the nerve to tell Method Man or ask him to his face about the homosexual rumors about him sleeping with Red Man and all this stuff. Man, he kicked that dude chill. <laughs> so I guess this guy's been keeping that garbage going and he was the one that wants to keep this, you know, trash going on. You know, meth ain't finna play no games with people, man. That's one brother you don't want to get mad. He's a really nice dude, but don't get him mad. Meth is not the guy you won't matter at you. Anyway. Wu-Tang! <laughs> and I'm out.